Hello, and welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer, and today we're going to be joined by Jesse DeWald, one of our cloud engineers here at Agile IT, and we're going to be talking through linking a domain in Microsoft 365. How are you doing today, Jesse? Doing great, Sean. How about yourself? Doing well. So what are we awesome. going to be talking about and walking through today? Where are we starting? Yeah, so we're going to start by adding a custom domain to your tenant. And then we're going to walk you through the steps into getting that custom domain set up to receive email and uh, pretty much function throughout your tenant so you can get everything else set up. Right. Let me go ahead and switch over to your screen. There we go. We got you now. All right. Perfect. So the first thing we're going to have you do is go to admin.microsoft.com. Uh, once you get there, if you go to the settings tab, you can go to domains and you'll see the default tenant domain sitting here. Most people don't want to utilize this when they're doing day-to-day -day business, kind of a weird email address to remember. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add a custom domain. So you go ahead and click that, uh, that add a domain. Uh, our domain is called agiletechtalk.com. We're going to go ahead and use this domain. A couple of different ways you can add this. You can also add this through Azure. Uh, but for, for demonstration purposes and to kind of get the, uh, the records that you'll need to add, to your DNS records, uh, we're going to go ahead and walk through this. It's just a little easier here. All right. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is add a text record to your DNS provider uh, so that it can actually uh, verify that you own this domain. So, you know, prevent people from stealing that. Uh, so what it's telling me to do here is add a text record with these uh, uh, credentials here, and then I should be able to go ahead and verify. So I'm already logged into uh, my DNS record here. We have a couple text records. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new text record. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy uh, the record that they provide here. And we're gonna set this to one minute here so it'll go as fast as possible. Oh, oops, it did not copy the correct thing. There we go. And usually it doesn't take very long at all. I'm going to go ahead and just try to verify this. I have to take a second here. So as you can see, it has not propagated through yet, although it did propagate my mistake pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it will, it will propagate here in the next, uh, I'd say, 30 seconds or so. All right. Uh, pretty impatient, so I'm just going to keep trying until it works. There you go. Now that domain is added in the tenant. Uh, now it's basically telling me how to complete the setup. So what this is going to do, it's going to walk me through the other records that it would like me to add. So if I hit continue here, it's going to give me three different records to add. This is the bare minimum to get your email up and running. Uh, if you did it, or if you are adding, you know, Skype for Business or Intune for mobile devices, there's other records that you, if I click these would pop up here. We're not going to be dealing with those right now, though. Uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and add the MX record. Uh, I've already gone ahead and added this particular MX record for Agile Tech Talk to the DNS to save us some time here. Uh, I have not added the Auto Discover record yet, though, so I'll go ahead and get that added uh, here. As you can see, it is a CNAME record. So same exact method, go ahead and add a C name. Go ahead and make that auto discover. And then it's always going to be autodiscover.outlook.com. And this is going to be the same for uh, pretty much any record that you, or, or any domain, custom domain that you have, it's always going to be autodiscover.outlook.com. Uh, unless you're in GCC high, which is going to be a little different. It's also going to ask you to, to add the SPF record here, uh, which I've already added as well. Uh, so that that's already good to go. Great. So once you've added that, go ahead and hit continue. It's going to run a check on your DNS. And now it says domain record or domain setup is complete. Go ahead and hit done. Uh, it automatically made it the default uh, in the tenant as I went through. As you can see, the status is healthy, which means the DNS records are correct. Um, and everything's looking good as far as Microsoft's concerned. The last thing you'd want to do if you're so inclined is to switch your active users to that domain. You could do it in bulk by clicking this button here. 
Um, you can also do it via PowerShell, depending on how you'd want to do it. Um, and that is about it is in terms of adding custom domains to your tenant. Great. Will you show how to add a user or two? Let's, let's bother Alan DeYoung. I know he's one of our demo tenant users. Alan DeYoung. You know, he's an existing user. You want me to just change his yep. domain? Just to show how that's done. Oh, perfect. So you can either go ahead and click on him and click manage username and email. Uh, you can go ahead and, and add it here um, like that by putting, you know, Alan D. And then you would select this and hit add. I don't know why it's... You got to edit the primary email address up above. That's for an alias. Oh. And that alias already exists, actually, because we did demo this before. Oh, that's added right. That alias. Um, but that is okay. Another way that you can actually change uh, the domain of the user is if you select this user. Oh, that's odd. Hold on, let me refresh this here. Hmm, that's weird. I think you have to select uh, multiple. Yeah, it's not popping up for some reason, but there should be an option here to actually manage domains at the top here. Um, and you should be able to just switch these domains in bulk as well. Okay. Uh, for some reason that's not showing. Uh, but yeah, essentially all you would need to do is just do this. Uh, you can hit done and save those changes. Uh, the reason why I wouldn't allow me to add that alias is because again, we had a, we had this added as an alias previously and we removed it right before this demo. So just hadn't updated on the email side yet. Uh, all right. Uh, but we got we we now have him as agiletechtalk.com. Be careful when doing so, though. Uh, you know, make sure that you allow your users to be informed that this is going to occur, or else they're going to try to put in their dot on Microsoft.com credentials when logging in, and it's not going to work. So right. you want to make sure that they know they're at that new domain. Great, thank you very much, Jesse. No problem, Sean.